Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to replace the coolant and the thermostat on your first generation Mazda 3. Now this particular model is a 2004 equipped with the 2.3 liter inline four motor. Now before proceeding with this work, you want to ensure that the vehicle has not been driven for several hours so that the coolant has had sufficient time to cool off to prevent scalding and injury. Now, before we can actually drain the coolant, we need to raise the driver's side of the vehicle up a little bit higher so that we have access to the radiator drain petcock valve. Before we actually raise the vehicle, we have to apply the parking brakes and I used some wheel chocks on both wheels on the passenger side of the car and then jacked up the driver's side. Now, the reason why we need to chalk both passenger side wheels is that you'll note raising this vehicle up on the driver's side results in both wheels on the driver's side coming off the ground. And that's due to the rigid chassis and extremely short wheelbase of this car. So just make sure that you have a set of jack stands and I'll, I'll be applying another one to the right, uh, to the rear, I should say, just uh, on the back of the car for safety. So with the vehicle raised, we're gonna have to remove this lower splash shield on the motor. They're held in with a series of 10 millimeter bolts located here, here, center, and basically the same thing on the right. Undo them all and set them aside. That on the driver's side of the rad, there's a drain petcock. You open it up using a wide bladed flat blade screwdriver and you basically insert it and then just twist it until coolant starts coming out. Now, once the petcock's opened, you want to go to the passenger side of the vehicle and open up the coolant reserve reservoir here to let air into the system so it drains quicker. We're going to go ahead now and undo these clamps right here and right here because this is the thermostat housing that bolts onto the engine and the housing itself actually contains the thermostat and that's held in with some 10 millimeter bolts as well. Now, I don't have anyone helping me film this, so you're just going to have to kind of go with what I'm doing here. It also helps to gain access to these connectors by disconnecting this plug by squeezing that tab and pulling this out, and then using a pair of needle nose pliers to just undo this wiring harness from the intake manifold. So, you saw I disconnected this sensor cable from our intake manifold. And then the other half of it's kind of tucked up in there now, just so it's out of the way. And then I finagled around with those clamps on those hoses. And now to remove them, we're going to give it a twist with a pair of pliers and then pop those off and then use a small metric socket to undo the three screws. If you guys can see that on the thermostat housing to remove it from the motor. Please note that you need to have a drain pan underneath this area because more coolant will end up coming out of the motor. All right, guys, so just so things are a bit easier to visualize because that engine bay is kind of tight and dark, that you can see that there are three mounting points for this thermostat housing that has the integrated thermostat and a gasket assembly. So here's the old thermostat. Now you'll note that there's a gasket groove here. When you're removing this, make sure that you pull the old gasket off, otherwise the new thermostat won't seal properly. So if you guys can see, there's the hole way down there in that engine bay, if I can get it to focus. Now, before we put the new thermostat on, you wanna make sure that that surface is clean. So I'm gonna use a paper towel uh, just to wipe up any dirt on the mating surfaces. If it's really rough, you can use a sort of a nylon abrasive pad and it has to be nylon to scour off any buildup that might be on there. You don't wanna gouge that mating surface. When that's clean, go ahead and reinstall the new thermostat, tightening the bolts just hand tight. All right, so once I installed the thermostat housing and just hand tightened the three eight millimeter bolts, I reinstalled our hoses and the clamps, and we're gonna now reconnect our little sensor cable that we disconnected from here and back there and just put everything back into its place. Tighten the petcock drain valve. Reinstall the lower cover. With the lower splash guard reinstalled and the vehicle lowered onto level ground, we can go ahead and now fill the vehicle with a universal coolant. Now I do stress that you want to use a universal coolant that is compatible with Mazda's cooling system and that would be stated clearly on the coolant bottle. The mixture that I'm going to be used is a pre-mixed 
50-50 solution made by Prestone. When the coolant has been filled almost completely to the top of the reservoir, start the engine and turn the heater on full hot. Continue to add coolant until the system is filled. Now, as the engine is idling and warming up, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the temperature gauge to ensure that the motor stays within proper operating temperatures, which is where the needle is presently. Now, also, as the engine is idling away, that you'll notice that the coolant level in the reservoir may drop. You want to ensure that you keep topping off that coolant level until the reservoir is at least three quarters full or more. Now the engine has been idling for about 20 minutes or so and I've seen that the coolant level has gone down every few minutes uh, which means that air that has been introduced in the system when we remove the thermostat is being slowly pushed out of the system. Now on the front of our coolant tank you'll see that there's a min mark and a max mark. What I like to do is top off the coolant so it's slightly above the max level so that you know as the engine continues to run while you're driving that as air gets pushed out or displaced that the coolant level will sort of drop and level off. So before reinstalling the reservoir cap make sure that you take a damp rag and you want to clean up that seal before reinstalling. So as you guys can see from my video that replacing the thermostat housing and the coolant on your Mazda 3 is fairly straightforward and can be accomplished with some basic tools. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.